Welcome to Model Engineers Laser. My name is Holly and this is part 20 of our Jack build. Today is boiler fitting. Very exciting. So the first thing I want to talk to you about, adjust the camera slightly, there we go, is our frames and the old series and designer frames that we had for boiler fitting. Now, need to give a little shout out to Richard here as a thank you for pointing it out to us. One of the benefits of building this now is proving that our kits actually work and go together. We've been selling them a long time and as you know, or some of you may know, we took over the business last year and learning all the products as we go along. So it's also great for us to get to know our product base. And it's since been discovered that the curvature here for the boiler to fit in isn't quite right. So I'm going to bring in the boiler into shop now. So we did briefly look at this nice shiny boiler in our first video when we did unboxing and that completely the wrong depth, but for the coach, it is meant to sit in there. However, this along the bottom here is absolutely fine. But these two points here, less than half a mil out, it's just so snug and it needs filing back. So maybe that's a better angle. You can just about see there, it doesn't actually go all the way down. It, it's slightly too tight. So we need to, on ours, or in, if you have an older kit, these bits just need taken off here less than half a mil each side, um, according to the cadets told me. Um, he has now amended the design of them. So from now on, if you get one of our jack kits, that shouldn't be a problem. But if you have an older design uh, frame from ourselves, you will need to take that out. Um, just, just a tiny, tiny fraction there. That being said, the first stage that we need to do in fitting a nice shiny boiler, I'll move the camera back down there so you can see what we're talking about, is to fit the smoke box to the boiler. Now, when we soldered all this together, what I will do as well, is I'm going to take the chimney off because otherwise I'm just going to keep banging it on everything and it doesn't actually need to be fitted at this point. So let's keep it all together. Just out of shot and out of trouble. Over there because we don't quite need those today oh, at the moment. So that out of the way as well. So when we soldered this together, you can see at points just there, not necessarily there. It's quite smooth there as well. It is literally just that bit there. There's a slight ridge on it. And our boiler needs to fit in the smoke box. And it doesn't because of that lip. So we need to take that bit off. Now, if you've got a Dremel with a little flat wheel, that'll be absolutely perfect for doing, doing this job. If you haven't got one, you can just use a hand file. You don't need to take a lot of it off. Um, I am leaving my dark bar on because that's not actually going to get in the way like the chimney is. But yeah, that just needs filing off there. While I've got the chimney off and I'm going to be attacking that with the Dremel, I am going to be drilling the holes in the sides for the dummy lubricator castings as well. So that's the first thing. You don't need to see me go file. You guys have seen me done enough filing on these videos and this is gonna be long enough as it is as a video in itself. You'll see that I've taken it out of the boiler frame. Um, that's just because of the various things that are going to be happening and have happened and made my life a little bit easier at this stage. So you should be able just to see on the camera where the paint has come off 
where I had painted it black and I've had to file just to allow the boiler to sit in the frame there. And you might not be able to tell on the camera on this one because it is so tiny that I've also sanded on the inside of there to allow the boiler to fit. And when we say the boiler fit, you do need to make sure that it does fit in all the way and not just, it is meant to be a snug fit. There we go. Right, so it needs to be able to go all the way to the boiler band. So you can see the boiler band that's overlapped there a bit, so that's fine. Um, but you want to make sure that this has gone all the way in and the boiler cladding will act as a small seal for all of those gaps. So it does fit. There we go. Part of the next stage is making sure that it does all fit together. And to do that, you also need to uh, bend the superheater. And... I did it by hand if I'm honest. If you remember in an earlier video when we were bending the tubes here from the cylinders, we had to be really careful to make sure that they they didn't pinch, that they kept their shape and that they were in the right place. That's exactly the same process that we followed for this one. Um, I had to bend it by hand, made sure that it would fit into the boiler but also without pinching. It is just a hand bend that's done very gently. Um, we can also at this stage fit the brackets for the cylinder lubricators. They are handed left hand and right hand and you can tell the difference because when we look at them we've got a nice flat edge on this one and then you've got all the pipe work and the bolts and attachments. They would go at the back so we know this is the right hand one and that this one is the left hand one, if you can see. Um, one of the other things we're going to be doing later is for the pipe work is we need to drill this hole out. However, that's going to be substantially easier when it's attached to the smoke box um, to give us something to hold on to. Uh, doing something this fiddly is going to be a bit of a nightmare. I would be tempted when attaching these to use a tiny bit of epoxy resin I'm not going to use epoxy resin just at the moment because I'm going to do a, a dry assembly as it were to make sure that it all fits and then take it all apart to paint it again. So I am going to assemble it not with glue but just the tiniest amount of epoxy resin. So we know that's our, well the right hand one as I'm looking at it now, just there. And when they're attached they'll look like a little pair of ears sticking out. and. This is where you all laugh at me because like I said these videos are warts and all. So I was looking for the washer to go on. Oh, that went on quite nicely. There we go. I'm only going to put them on a finger tight for now. There we go, so that one sits on there. Didn't put it on very finger tight at all actually, did I? And the same for this one. I haven't done anything to the holes in the smoke box. They are plenty of room to get them on there. They're not tapped and threaded in any way. That nut, every time the washer goes on perfectly. advantage of having the table there to hold it in place. This would be really difficult to do in the build frame because it's not actually attached. 
and you'd be fighting all the paperwork and not be paperwork pipe work and not be able to turn it all the way upside down to get gravity to help you. There we go. And before we put it all together to make sure it all fits, that includes fitting the front running board, we also need to attach the boiler mounting foot. So this is that the piece here. When it comes to roundhouse, you get a countersunk screw that's attached in the bottom. I've already removed that. Now this is in the instruction books for the lady instruction book for the lady and boiler page five. Not blue please read your heart page. You're not prepared. Um, I'm going to read it out. The boiler mounting foot, which is stainless steel casting in brackets, which it is not. This is aluminium. Um, can now be fitted to the back of the boiler. First, remove the bottom long countersunk screw, which is what I'd already done, from the casting. The large hole in it fits over the flue tube and the curved platform points towards the front and sits under the boiler barrel. So it's to do that, you're going to have to sort of post it through the pipework. And so it sits on there and you can see there is a gap in the cladding, quite a generous gap in the cladding for that to rest over. So it is going to sit like that over the boiler. The brass boiler band should now be fitted. Now, in the earlier videos when we were talking from the parts from Roundhouse, like I said, they already know what you're gonna need if you're gonna build jack, but you do need an extra boiler band. And this is where it comes in. So the boiler band is gonna to have to go over the wrapper, so under your pipework here and around, and it actually sits over this mounting foot. So the way they've worded it in the instructions go back page the brass boiler band should be fitted around the rear of the boiler over the boiler wrapper which is the brass bit here passing over the curved platform so when it is tightened it clamps the mounting foot to the boiler so what that means is can you, so this is the curved platform that they're talking about here now you can see with the wrapper they've got these little tabs here that sit up let me see with the screw and the nut that go through them. We're going to have to emulate that with the boiler band. So you can see it in the packet as it comes. It's already set up for it, it just needs bending. Um, flat nose pliers ready to do that. I wouldn't do it up too tight at the moment because as it all sits on your boiler, on your framework, sorry, here, you might find you need to pivot it slightly. So if you do it up too tight, you're not going to have that play to make sure that everything sits where it needs to. Right, let's have a play at getting it all together. So we have a painted front running plate here with various holes in the front of the running board here. You may remember in an earlier video where we've attached these and painted them on and glued them in and how they're raised. Now these help us with these two holes here and that's how they're going to be located in. So if I tilt that up for you to see. I'm hoping that's showing up on the camera. That they locate in there as such. And then we need another little nut and bolt to go through. You've only got two holes now on the front here, so that one's still clear, and we've got that one there. Oh, this is when I probably should put it back in the build frame, but I'm not going to put it in to take it out again. I might do. I'm going to pause the camera while I put it back in the build frame. My delightful husband told me as I've put it in the build frame, you're going to have to take it out again to do the rest of the work. So I put it in and I've managed. Um, she says not bitterly at all. Okay, don't laugh. Like I say, this is a warts and all video. 
So my superheater is going to go through there. And I suppose what's that? this is all coming through on the camera, okay. So I need to come. Let's see, that's where I've got it wrong. So first, you need to put that through the smoke box. Brownie points for anybody who noticed that prior to me doing it. And they need to tuck through there. Bend that gently through. It look like a little engine now, it's very exciting. They, they need to go... I'm talking to myself. I do that if they're on camera or not, to be fair. Oh, this is why I said don't put it in the boiler, in the build frame for this bit. I think we're going to go get my tweezers. Bear with me. Right, back armed with tweezers. Right, go in the hole, please. Yay! So much easier. Mm. I'm hoping this is showing up on the camera. You haven't just got a horrible view of the back of my hand and nothing else. No, you've got a general horrible view of the back of my hand. So I've just put the screws in the front of the smoke box. Oh, try and hold it in place and turn it upside down. So you can, can you oh, help if it's actually on the camera? So it's just tucked under here, and just under there is where it's peaked out. And the, I needed another two there, but I'll go and fetch those in a moment. I need to put the nuts on the bottom. I'm only doing everything up really loose at the moment because I need to make sure it all fits. And I need the wiggle room. I'm gonna do that on the build frame. It's held in place with those. I'm working with gravity at the moment. There we go. So next is to attach that onto there. That's a good job I didn't screw that down. I'm taking it apart now anyway. <laughs> that was a pointless exercise. Wonderful. So that's on there. That goes on there. like it all fits yeah so I, now I know that it definitely does go together I can put a boiler band on now I might be doing this three or four hundred times but I'd rather take care I'm putting a lot of effort into this <laughs> to make sure that it all goes together nicely so I'm trying to rescue then rush it all do it all in one fit and make you see that it doesn't work Boiler band. I pause the camera because I've put some more wood on the fire because uh, it's a little bit nippy today. There we go. So that it's going to have to come round.
Let's bend it. I'm just doing it by hand, as you can see. Making sure my microphone is in the right place so you could all hear me, okay? Yeah, so that's going to bend around quite nicely. We know we've got plenty of room. The reason I've started to bend it before I've bent my ends is to make sure that you bend them the right way. As you probably know, the more you bend metal, the weaker it is. And you want to make sure that you bend the tabs the right direction. So by giving it a bit of curve already, you don't end up bending, for example, that one this way and that one that way. It's just a little bit of foolproofness for you. So now we've got that. As you can see, they're slightly shaped. I'm just going to put the pliers along the edge there, nice and straight, and just Bent it too far, so she was talking about overbending things. And then same on that side. Sort of didn't want to go, and then it went really easy. There we go. So put our foot on. Watch your pressure gauge and going over the cladding around and then a few hands probably Start it off and wiggle it round because that's going to be quite difficult to manipulate with lots of fingers. Let's let it catch. I feel a bit like you know that game you used to have when you were a kid, and if you got it in the right wrong place, it used to beep at you frantically. Mm -hmm. You touched it. It was a bit like that then, wasn't it? So don't forget that that has got to incorporate that shelf. So that's a really tight fit. Let's shimmy it down a bit. Can't shimmy it down a lot because you've got that one there. But this is not going to have a lot of play. I might have to re-bend. Cladding, try and give it a bit more room. Oh, there we go, I've got one in. There we go. I just wedged it in the gap there to try and uh, manipulate it round. There we go. That is a very, very snug fit. So I only caught that on there to help me get it on there's not a lot of play in that at all so you are gonna have to have a little bit of a fiddle with that but again I'm not doing it up tight because I need to attach this to the engine as well onto the, the chassis and that's when we can tighten it up because this is gonna have to have a bit of play in order for us to attach it on Right, now to put it together properly with that there, bring this back into shot. There we go. And that is all on. Uh, I'm just looking at the time on the video. What I'm going to do between now and the next video is I'm going to 
put these screws back into the smoke box because none of you need to laugh at me getting that completely wrong. And then in our next video, just so you don't panic, we're going to address the space between the boiler foot and the bottom because that's going to need a packer. And we'll do that in the next video as well. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your patience. I know there's been a, a big gap between videos and some of you have already mentioned we've been to lots of shows. We've had two stays in hospital with The Apprentice and we've had the house ripped apart and started again. I think the only rooms they didn't touch were The Apprentice's bedroom and our bathroom. Everything else has been gutted and started again. Um, so yeah, really thank you for your patience and hopefully you can see that we are making some progress with her again. She she can start taking some priority now we've got room to work on her and we'll see you in the next video thanks ever so much don't forget to like and subscribe